Hi, ever wonder what it's like to work another profession or live in the underworld? Listen to Unsuspecting Riders give a 10 to 15 minute personal masterclass as I spontaneously interview them as they enter my taxi. I'm your host, Simon Rushton, and this is Taxi Chronicles. Morning, morning, morning. Yes, we're back with another rider, another episode. Today we've got the honour to have a guy and he's into the um, open offices. Basically, facilities management. Yep, to put it in short. It's facilities management and he's going to tell us how the office world has changed over the time. So nice to have you here today, if you've got that. Here's the mic. Uh, okay, so first of all, tell us, what kind of child were you when you were in school? Uh, sports, energetic. Oh, is it? Okay. Yeah, never really sat down. Um, sort of made me realise that if I was going to do something in my career, it would either be in sports or, or, or what I'm doing now. So, uh, so I followed my father's trade. My father was basically a head porter for a block of flats. And he, um, I used to sit there and watch him do, he was electrician, plumbing, everything, sort of picked everything up from him. Um, first actual job was working on a fruit and vegetable. Okay. So yeah, so manual handling started that early. Mm-hmm. Um, I slowly worked my way through. Started off at Canary Wharf, spent about two and a half weeks, three weeks as a temp over there. Then went into a business where they took me on as a temp and kept me on and gradually worked my way up. So I started as a facilities assistant, carried on working all the way up to facilities coordinator, assistant facilities manager, facilities manager, and then sort of operations. So I've, I've been able to sort of take on board my previous experiences, it allowed me to work with many, many people from many, many backgrounds. Um, but yeah, very experienced. So. You didn't go to uni then? No, no. I basically, <laughs> I actually did a sports science course uh, degree in BTEC National. Um, and did that for three years. Wanted to become a sports therapist and went to see my university consultant and, yeah. and spoke to them and asked them what do they think I should do. And out of 100,000 applicants, only two get a job within the industry. Mm-hmm. Um, didn't really want to take the chance um so went straight into work went straight into sort of facilities management Mm -hmm. um but it was something that i really enjoyed because one thing that's key for me is that every day is different Different Um, faces as well yeah um you meet people along the way and people are they've got 50 60 years of experience but you learn from them and then you allow you carry sort of their legacy on um which has allowed me to sort of progress and, and, and work with people younger than me who, who are basically what I was at at stage one. Um, but yeah, it's been amazing. It's been really good. Wouldn't change it. What would you say you've learned over the industry that you wish you knew when you started? Um, how important health and safety is. Health and safety back in the day was, was basically a signed document to say that you understand the site procedures, whereas now... You take on board everything, especially especially during the pandemic. Um, it made me realise that actually you don't sort of foresee an issue before an issue happens. When an issue occurs, for example, using a ladder, uh, ensuring you've got three points of contact on a ladder. Again, I went on a training course, thought, thought it was laughable, but watching the industry and watching how bad the industry is. And again, it's down to people's arrogance. It's not down to how yeah. people are. Um, My cousin fell off a 30 foot ladder and then um, he got a brain, he had a tumor that mm. was taken out through his nose. Wow. And now he's deaf as wow. well. So, uh, and he's partly crippled. That's so just because he's up the ladder and he decided to shunt it yeah. instead of trying to come in down, move it, yeah. where it to go. Exactly, exactly. And the same, and same the goes for... And didn't cover him because of his own fault. It's unbelievable. Because, again, risk assessments are probably the biggest key in order for you to put work together. Um, the slightest little bit in a risk assessment that may not make sense or may not be compatible with the working load, you're liable in a court of law. Um, 
whoever's signatures on that risk assessment is liable in a court of law. Um, and that's sort of the biggest key now going forward. Mm-hmm. Even, and again, with the pandemic, it's just making sure that you've got the, prep, the correct precautions in place. I mean, we've had to sort of work together to make the office socially access, acceptable in the pandemic. But again, making it safe. So when people come in, they feel more and more safe when they're in the business mm. than they are coming in. Um, and we found that. We found that people feel more and more socially distanced or, or wearing face masks or hand sanitising units. The small little things add up. But are they wearing the face masks in the office? Is that required? Or? Yeah, so our, so our risk assessments um, is that you can wear, you have to wear your face masks around the office, but when you're in front of your, your desk or PC or anywhere, you you basically don't have to. Um, you, you spoke about the change of layout of the office. Um, I would like to go over that again because obviously a lot of people are working from home mm-hmm. and now you've got, you're saying people are coming back to work for mm-hmm. the office. What changes and accommodations have you made? So, for example, if you look at one of our offices, we've got, I don't know, 158 seats. For it to be acceptable, and in line with the risk assessment, we can only have 52 seats. Um, that means every other desk uh, is out. Meeting rooms, if you had eight people acceptable in one meeting room, is now down to four. Um, you you basically need to ensure that you take on board the two meter distant rule. Um, I think the biggest one for us is, is, is how a lot of business, like especially startups, need the office space they require office space because collectively it's difficult for them to work separately they need to work in conjunction with one another um, overall the businesses itself it hasn't really taken much effect I mean 97% of the workforce were able to work from home um, so have you got that open office op- uh, hot desk system? yeah yeah so, so no one has a desk anymore no um, and I think that's the biggest thing that you'll see coming up in sort of the real estate news is hybrid working um so similar to agile working two Uh, days at home two days in the office the fifth day you can do what you want exactly exactly and then you'll do things like um group days where you ask for all your department to be in one day you 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 designate an area directly for that department to work if that department works say there's 10 of them you would give out 20 desks um, so you could branch into a WeWorks area of business, you know WeWorks? Similar, similar. Um, Always it, have the office available. Yeah, so it, with, with the business that I work in, it, it's normally set offices for set people. Mm-hmm. Um, whereas, I mean, going forward with now with WeWorks and, 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 and moves and spaces and stuff like that, they're, they're key. They're going to be very key going forward because they're going to have the, the they'll have to adjust their amount of i mean they'll probably lose a bit of money but that money would come back because people will want to be going in um, because they feel safe so yeah we works is probably going to see a, a sharp increase in investment um well, what i was saying as a facilities management company if if you're got voids now where you could have a office space where you could always have that if they mm-hmm. don't rent it a month in advance mm-hmm. then it goes open to rent for that yeah 100 100 I mean? and, and and that's one things with subleases and stuff like that you can you can contractually put in similar to housing um if you want to rent a house for a, a year you get your agreement for a year or what's quite common now is pay and go so you'll pay for the desk uh You've got a team of three. You pay for six desks um, over a duration of I don't know two weeks. And our next two weeks you don't want it. Fine, don't worry. And then you say, actually, I do want it back. Fine, you pay for another two weeks. Mm. Um, it's pay and go basically. Yeah. That's, that's okay. What well, um, what does the future hold for you? <sighs> it's difficult to say. Um, I've been quite lucky with the business that I work in. Uh, they've allowed me to carry on working throughout. I think I spent six weeks working from home, um, and then sort of lockdown one sort of started to come out, and we we carried on. But for me, it'd be progression um, in regards to sort of building management. Uh, it could it, again, 
It could be anything. I could win the lottery tomorrow and retire. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, you took the route of experience first. Mm -hmm. For a younger person who may be listening to this episode now, mm -hmm. who thinks, yeah, facilities management, I don't want to go into that. What would, what would be your recommendation of route? Um, see, there's courses galore out there, and I could say to you, do the facilities management courses. I, I, I didn't. I didn't do that. Mm -hmm. I basically went into the industry because I, I enjoyed it. Um, mm -hmm. And I was 100% so lucky with, with, with how it went for me. I, I, I couldn't ask for any more mm -hmm. chances. For people now, I would turn around and say to them, they probably need to look at the opportunities. Um, start at the bottom. Start at the bottom. If you like trade, get into it. Be an apprentice. Get into it. A lot of the people that I work have been apprentice and, and, and gone into industries and gone from being an electrician and a plumber into facilities, facilities management because they see how it works. It's very easy to sort of parallel the two. Um, in my honest opinion, just go for it. Just do what you need to do. Um, so there's no set recommendation. You just go with what suits you. Yeah. I mean, facilities management, again, it, it incorporates so much. So you may work well with other people. So maybe you should be looking at front of house, uh, 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 what they call it, employee liaisons. So people who work at the workplace but want to be interactive with the client or with, the, with, with, with their team. Whereas some people prefer the management levels who would rather just get involved and be organising budgets and, and, and reviewing square footage and, and what, what else you can do. And I mean, I mean, again, this year, especially the facilities management sector is getting more and more bigger because of the um, environmental sustainability and governance uh, laws that are coming out from, from the government, okay. which is really, really good to get involved with because, again, that can eliminate sort of mm -hmm. exceeded CO2 levels it can it can look and make sure that from a governance point of view you are working to the right standards mm -hmm. um, and then there's there's creditations out there that you get for businesses that shareholders love so ISO 14001 which is an international standard for for um, energy um, okay. and yeah honestly well, thanks a lot for that you're welcome much appreciated you're welcome and we wish you well thank you We hope you liked that interview. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to get the latest daily episode. Ever considered investing in a continent with the fastest growing economy and population on Earth? The same continent that holds 30% of the world's known natural resources? Then listen to our sister podcast, Africa Investor Stories, where you will hear real investors with real stories from around the world share the experience of investing in Africa. We post Monday and Thursday at 10am.